can you imagine yourself sitting on top of a mountainside, a hillside, and watching the, the, the glory of God spread himself across the land? Can you imagine that? i got a little story I would like to read with you guys. And by the way, glory be to God, he has gathered us together in the name of Jesus Christ. And he's alive. I got a little story I want to share with you about a person sitting on top of a mountainside looking out across the valley and having nothing within his heart except for praise for God because he had just gone through a healing program uh, set up to, to help him with either his mental illness or his drug addiction, his alcohol addiction. You know, I, I've had visions of this, and not only have I had visions, I've seen that vision come full reality. These places exist where you could be struggling in life with some sort of an addiction or problem, and one of the things I, I always, like PTSD, or how about addiction to depression? A place for people who are struggling with some sort of mental damage caused by the effects of some sort of abuse or traumatic, uh, uh, a traumatic situation or something that happened. Right? And they got these places out in the mountains or in the country and there you go pet the horses and got some animals and some llamas and, and different things that uh, are out there. And then you're surrounded by uh, counselors and, and stuff like that. And people trying to be a part of the reprogramming uh, of a new way of life. See, we came out of a life of, of abuse, whether that was self-abuse or abuse from some outside source. We're, we're, place of suffering from PTSD and then we come to a place surrounded by people willing to give you tools, teachings and instructions to pull you out of the old way of life, the, the abusive life into a, a life free from abuse. And seen it, even mentioned that you know, it, it would take like a million dollars to get one of these things going and, and functioning. And then when you have the people coming in, how do you sustain it? How do you keep it sustained? Where, where's the money come from? Yeah, some of the guests and the peoples could be a part of cooking their own meals, being a part of the running and the operations of the healing center, you know, of the ranch. How do you sustain it? Where's the money come from? You could ask the government for a grant, and they may give you money, but with that comes rules. And rule number one is we must separate religion, we must separate Jesus Christ from the healing process. You know, I was just online invited into a place where helping or providing helpful information, a source of information to find help for mentally ill and people suffering from depression. And great, that, that, that right there, PTSD is that place that I feel drawn to or called to and, and desire to help people suffering from that. You know, this is a, a giant problem in the United States, PTSD. I have a cousin whom I know, haven't seen in a while, but suffers daily to PTSD, spending, doing three tours to war, one to Iraq and two to Afghanistan and on a third time coming back something died in him 
and now is suffering daily and struggling daily to stay alive one more day. That's how bad the PTSD is mastering over his mind and body. He, he was a healthy, good young man. <clears throat> but there's a lot of things like this, right? And so online, this person has anti-bullying group and the mental illness help depress people. Great. I'd like to be a part of that. I have a lot of good information and teachings and instructions that could help people recover from that. And well, you cannot bring in any type of religion. And that's exactly what the AA does. Alcoholics Anonymous or whatever drug anonymous. You can have a higher power but don't bring Jesus Christ in there. We want to remove the healer. Jesus Christ can cure you, can heal you. But we want to remove that guy. And you say, well, because you're, you're eliminating too many people, not eliminating anyone, freely giving the, the same information to everyone, you can choose not to believe it. But to say you have no right to, to bring it in is ridiculous. And then you say, well, why don't you have a Christian ran organization healing center set up for Christians? As though Christians don't become drug addicts, as though Christians don't suffer from PTSD, as though Christians don't have problems. I mean, when we think about it, and you go to church for one hour on Sunday, look at the hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars being spent all across the United States. Even in my own place where we, we, we spend tons of money giving to the pastors to, to maintain a building that is open one hour a week every Sunday so you can come and sing songs. Because the sermon itself is 15 minutes. But we sing and dance and praise the Lord for one hour, one week. The rest of the time that building is closed. So, so nobody gets healed. Nobody can find the cure. It's not a place to go get cured. It's not a place to find healing. It's a place to sing songs to God for one hour a week. Yet, as a, as a Christian, when you come to people and you say, hey, I can't do it on my own. Can't do it on my own. They, they, they back off, they shy away. How dare I give you $5? How dare I give you $10? Ten, if 1,000 people donated $10, that's $10,000. It, it costed you nothing. One happy meal. One Happy Meal at McDonald's and unwilling to, to donate to a cause that is going to provide the cure, provide the healing. Now we'll donate all kinds of money to a building that is closed six days a week, open one hour on Sunday for song. So you could sing to the Lord. Now I've been to churches and, and seen where pastor be all upset bring me the ties right? right this was a sermon for for that sunday bring me the ties and he gets the ties and opens up and jan wrote a check here for ten dollars thank you jan puts it down went through the entire offering basket of everybody exposing everybody embarrassing everybody shaming everybody then grabs the cash, and this is what the rest of you gave. <clears throat> then bitching out the congregation. I told you when I came here, I want $125,000 a year, and you're $60,000 short. Upset. Upset. 
No. Same church, many years later. Same pastor. All happy. This year alone, we brought in $598,000. And then we spent or gave away all of it. Sending money to Minnesota, sending money to Washington, sending money to Africa. So they said, don't know who or why. Oh, we're going to build another building in Washington where they got churches on every corner. We're going to build another building in Washington just dedicated to our religion or religious beliefs. I don't know. Another place where people could come and sing for one hour a week on Sunday. And do I know for sure the money got there? I don't even know because they say you don't need to know those people. Don't worry about them. We as the elders know what's best and best way to spend your money. And not recognizing the people's needs that we're setting right there. Because nobody's needs were being met right there. No one's. Yet they're mailing off all the money to some unknown source. Because they signed a deal with the devil for their tax exemption. Instead of saving the money or or stockpiling the money and then using the money constructively so that people could be healed, people could find the cure, so that the building could be opened and operated 24 hours a day. It's one of the reasons I try to make myself available online, my ministry's online, right? I'm the poor idiot comes up with the good idea, hoping and praying that those who have the means would put this together, would make it happen. Make it happen. But I don't know. It's the one thing in the United States of America that's lost is that moral value of what we do to our neighbors is a benefit to myself. We, we don't care about the mentally ill. We don't care about those suffering from PTSD. Because if we cared, we, we, you know, even though they got the places in place now, how does anybody except for Bloomberg's child or Biden's child afford to go to those places and get healed? Well, it's only for the rich. And they remove Jesus. But what about the, 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 the poor? What about the regular Joes? The guys who aren't really poor but have a job, and in order to get healed, they have to take six months off of their job, maybe a year away from the city life, going on to a ranch and being healed. But who could afford that? Who pays for it? And people go to church today and never get healed, never find the cure. I don't know. Can you imagine yourself standing on the top of a mountain, looking out in the valley, seeing the glory of God stretching himself over life? I've been there, I've been hunting, been fishing, been out in the middle of the wilderness. I always feel like out in the middle of the wilderness, I, I feel real small, and I feel like the world is never going to come to an end. 
and nothing is worried. Nothing's worried and, and nothing's afraid. And, and pretty soon, any anxiety or fears that I had from leaving the city, going out into the middle of the wilderness where the bears, the tigers, and the deer all roam. Pretty soon, all that anxiety goes away. And then you begin to, instead of, yeah, I pray, but I listen. It's hard to say anything except for, thank you, Father. Thank you, God. What a, what a beautiful sight I behold today. Been sitting there and seen a bolt of lightning. You ever been in a lightning storm? Here in today's world, when in our homes inside the cities, you, you can't appreciate the lightning anymore. But when you're camping or you're out in the mountains and all you got is a, is a little tent you pitched, and there's nothing to protect you, and the lightning storm comes, it's frightful. It's scary. When was the last time you went for a walk out down the road, through the middle of a park. Well, there was a lightning storm actively going on. People in the old days, even me, when I'm in the mountains, when you see a bolt of lightning just strike a tree, not too far in front of you, right there, and that tree just whoosh, blows up into a flame of fire. You're looking around, right? In the middle of nowhere. Because that's the first thing you do is you look around and see if anybody saw you jet your pants. And you realize you're the only person there. And that tree is a flame. My first thought was, Jesus, there's going to be a forest fire. And there's nobody to put it out. Except for me. Go run down to the tree, got my shovel out, and now I'm gonna put the flames out, and pretty soon the rain came. Heavy enough to put the flame out. That was scary. <laughs> and that boom! The crack of not having control. The crack of God's voice. I want to read you this little story this, that somebody may have wrote just after re re receiving the healing, receiving the cure from hanging out at one of those rehabilitation ranches was sitting on top of the mountain. Oh, Lord, my God, you are very great. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out like the heavens, a tent, or stretching out the heavens like a tent. Can you imagine sitting on top of that mountain watching that lightning storm coming in? And you're completely unprotected. I've been in many lightning storms up in the mountains, and, and you can watch it from the hillside way down the valley as this bolt of lightning, and it keeps coming closer and closer, louder and louder. He lays the beams of his chambers on the water. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides the winds, the wings of the wind. He makes his messengers, winds, his ministers, a flame of fire. He set the earth on its foundation so that it shall never be moved. 
You covered it with the deep, as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took flight. Have you ever been in the middle of a lightning storm? Fearing, fearing, being struck, fearing that the fact that there's something in control greater than our control, the trembling of the thunder. God knowing what he's doing. We know today that there are ditches and canyons inside the ocean deeper and greater than that of the Grand Canyon. And it's all covered in the ocean. Everything in the mountains, the birds, the animals, everything in the sea, the fish, the frogs and the creatures, all created by God for good. You want to see God, you want to talk to God, you want to be healed by God. You got to be in the nature looking at how, how nothing's worried. Nothing is stressed out. And in all of it, none of those things in nature are set in motion to judge you, to harm you. You say, yeah, well, bears and lions and tigers are a little harmful. Only when you're unprotected by the Holy Spirit. If you're protected by God, with God, walking with God. Like Samson, you can rip open a lion. Like David, you can take down the giant. It's amazing, climate control. It's the biggest lie being taught to the people today. All designed to, to tax you more money, to enslave you further, to a system that cares less about the people. It's robbing. Wouldn't it be better to invest $50 trillion into the mental health of our veterans. I mean, these are our brothers and sisters, cousins and nephews, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters. They're out there wasting their minds, their bodies, not for our freedom. Not for our freedom. It's amazing how Americans, no matter how small or how great, refuse to acknowledge the best way to find a cure is to first admit you're sick. your thunder or at your rebuke they fled at the sound of your thunder they took flight the mountains rose the valley sank down to the place that you appointed for them God's in control of our destiny God is fully in control some vessels are made for destruction, other vessels are made for His glory. Some are made to be healed, and some may never see the healing. But everybody will experience God. You set a boundary that they may not pass, that they may not 
again cover, again cover the earth. Everything has a limit. Evil and wickedness is passing away. Sin is passing away. Those who practice sin are passing away. But the righteous will never be removed. The poor in spirit will not be removed. Being poor is not a sin. God's not going to remove poverty. Being greedy is a sin. And one day God will remove greed. Loving each other with a sincere heart has died. Proving to each other we're smarter and wiser than the next. No problem with that. Opening buildings and making people, convincing people that spending hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on a building we sing songs in for one hour a week is justice, righteous, and holy? Should we not care about the needs of our neighbors, of our countrymen? You make springs gush forth in the valley. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Besides them, the birds of the heavens dwell. They sing among the branches. For your lofty abode, you watered the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock, the plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to the garden to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart, trees the trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted, in them the birds build their nests. The stork has her home in the fir trees. Again, can you imagine a person who has just been healed and cured sitting on top of a mountain? Watching God come riding on the chariots of the clouds. God is spirit. God is loving. God is caring. God desires to heal you. Spreading himself out across the land. Coming in thunder and lightning. Fire and glory. Behind him falls the rain of blessing that gives life to all. Can you imagine that there's a river in heaven where, where it flows continuously with healing waters? Anybody can drink of that river. If I wanted to bring as many tanker trucks as I could ever create that the world has ever known, gathered them all together, me, myself, with all the greed I got, and, and, and filled them up until there was no more room. That river would still continue, continuously flow because it abundantly fills everyone who drinks of it. And everyone is satisfied. Even if I wanted to go and just have one glass of water. To the measure of your own faith, to the measure of your own love, it will be given to you. Whatever it is that satisfies you, that fills you, whether it be a little or a lot. And nobody could drain the source as it flowed fully and abundantly. 
Isn't it amazing how you can still go to the mountains, to the countryside, to the wilderness, and catch fish? There's still deer, there's still buffalo, there's still the antelope, even though man tried to kill every last one, caging every animal, taking away your food supply. And although the city system is a good system, feeds millions, keeps millions safe, in that system, you become a rat trapped in a maze. And then it becomes insanity. And then we have nowhere to escape to or from. But in the midst of the wilderness, we find a voice crying out, Make the Lord's path straight, and He will bless you. He will reward you. He will give you the remission of sin which is found inside the Holy Spirit. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the rock badgers. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for the setting. You make darkness and it is night when all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away. And they lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. Oh Lord, how manifold are your works. How real are your works. In wisdom, you have made all of them. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which <clears throat> teems with creatures unnumerable, living things, both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan, which you have formed to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. And when you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide their face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirits, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord, Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his words. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Could you imagine a man, a woman, sitting on top of the mountain, writing this poem, this prayer, watching God. They just got cured from their addiction, from PTSD, from depression. Watching God spread his wings 
across the valley in a thunderstorm, being there unprotected by houses, armies, battle gear, but completely surrendered to the living God. Could you imagine that? Because that is Psalm 104. The animals depend on God. And God feeds them. Why don't we get cured? Why don't we find healing? Because Jesus says, come to me and I will heal you. Come to me and you will be cured. Why don't we get healed? Why aren't we cured? Come to me. I will heal you. The earth, the seasons, the moon, the sun, all depend on God. Why aren't we healed? Come to me, says the Lord. I will heal you.